Hey, this is Jay Eisenicki, and this is episode two of the Latent Force Prepare Defensive Action Podcast. Three, two, one. This is the Latent Force Prepare Defensive Action Podcast. We believe there's no defensive situation so bad that your lack of training can't make it worse. We're on a mission to cut the crap in the firearms industry and bring you only the most powerful, impactful, and useful discussions and tips on mindset, gear, and personal defense that is designed to make you a more informed and effective gunfighter. Guys, gals, and submarine racers, here are your hosts, Jay Eisenicki and Mike Garza. Hey, thank you for joining us for episode two of the Latent Force Prepared Defensive Action Podcast. My name is Jay Eisenicki, and joining me is my co-host, the one and only Mike Garza. How are you today, Mike? Definitely one and only, right? Oh my gosh, they broke the mold. The one and only mold breaker. That's right. <laughs> hey, so I was uh, out in the internet doing things that we do on the internet. And well, actually I was on Facebook and didn't want to say anything because my daughter tells me that only old people are on Facebook anymore. So I guess she's right. But I came across this article in one of our instructor uh, groups. And in that group, it was a um, story that had to do with the a shooting in Houston. And it was at an outdoor gun range. And a gentleman had just pulled up to the range, was getting out of his car, was heading to go do some shooting. And the employee at the range was fiddling with a hunting rifle somewhere on the range and had a negligent discharge. Bullet struck the other man in the parking lot in the head. He was taken to the hospital where, unfortunately, he later died. The whole senselessness and tragedy of it kind of made me think that this would be a great opportunity to just kind of touch on and remind people of the importance of reviewing the safety rules. Yeah, for the love of Pete's sake. I mean, so number one, right, all guns are loaded. And they're not loaded some of the time. They're loaded all of the time. Even if you just unloaded it, that little guy with bullets, that little leprechaun is dancing around somewhere and loading your gun just after you checked it, right? That's the way I always think about that rule. How about don't point your gun at something that you do not wish to destroy, like some guy's melon, right? He was at a gun range. Why did he not have that gun pointed down range into a safe spot? I, again, crazy. Yeah, and exactly. Uh, so, I mean, the question is on that particular one, right? Always point in a safe direction and nothing you're willing to destroy. So what is, what's a safe direction? Well, if you're at a gun range, why not the berm, right? Why not a, a, uh, a bullet catch? I, again, it just, it baffles me why you would point it. Maybe he had a wall or something in between them, but as we all know, drywall or wood doesn't stop around, right? So yeah. again, you've got to validate that safe direction. Uh, how about keep your finger off the trigger? Hmm. That might be some important there. You know, the laser rule, whatever that muzzle is pointing at, pretend there's a laser coming out of it. Anything that laser touches could be possibly, you know, destroyed. Now, the only thing with the trigger finger straight along the frame till you're on target and decided to fire is I'm hoping that we can graduate just a little bit. <laughs> and I know you already know what I'm going to say is, can we please... For the love of everything holy, stop saying keep your booger hook off the bang switch. I, I don't yeah, I know. Mean, come on. But look at whenever you form your finger into how you would normally press the trigger, what does that make? It, just a hook, right? So naturally you want to call it the booger hooker. I'm just saying, just food for thought. That's oh, all. Okay. Well, you know, you know, every time that one of these people <laughs> from the left hears somebody say, Hi, hey, keep your booger hook off your bang switch. I guarantee <laughs> you that's exactly they stereotype all the pro two A people as some sort of inbred, you know, 
backwards USA type of people. And I, I just, I don't know. That's just my opinion. I'll get off my soapbox. Sorry. <laughs> and the last rule, right? So again, a lot of companies have a whole bunch of different rules. We just want you to impress four on you, right? And the last one being your background. We talked a little bit about it, right? Maybe the guy was pointed at a wall or something, and then he discharged that weapon and boom, went through the wall and, you know, shot some poor innocent person. So make sure that your background is not dirty. Make sure that if you do have to put something on downrange, like let's say you're at a square range and then something behind it, you know, might get hit by accident. We want to try and avoid that. We want to try and make sure that your background is clear. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit more, like when you're talking about inside your home and your kids might be sleeping in the back or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, here's the thing about this is that there's really only two ways that you're going to have an accident with a firearm, um, a negligent discharge. The first one is, is that it's going to be ignorance, okay, is that you are – completely ignorant, never handled a gun, don't know how it works, don't know any of the, anything about how things should be. Now, I'm going to assume that this isn't an employee at a gun range, so I'm going to assume that they're not ignorant. So it only leaves a second way that it happens, which is carelessness. You know the rules, you know how stuff's supposed to be, but either through complacency or some sort of arrogance, you don't think that that stuff applies and it'll never happen to me. So those two things you got to be really aware of is ignorance and carelessness. So once you learn those four rules, you should be able to see how many people out there are careless uh, and ignorant. So it, it's important that you know so you can identify those people out there that that just don't have a clue. You mean like a photographer taking pictures in between targets? Yeah, that would be that would be exactly <laughs> right. It's yeah, you just see crazy stuff when you're out on the range and and sometimes it's just a good idea just to go home because the things that people do. So well, anyway, I we'll get off our soapbox on that and and what I would encourage everybody to do, and I know this this is only our second podcast, so I want to always try to let everybody know is kind of a thing that you know we'd like you to do is if you have a comment on anything that we talk about here or have any questions, any ideas for future shows, whatever, make sure to leave a comment on our Facebook page um, or you can send us an email to podcast at latentforce.com. So don't miss the opportunity to send us something. Speaking of which – I do have a listener question, which is the reason that we're having our podcast today is thank you very much to uh, Larry, who sent in a uh, a question, which is, with regards to home security, what do you recommend and what is acceptable for quick access? That's a great question. I think it's worthy of talking about a little bit. So kind of what we thought we'd do is we got a couple of things we'll talk about. And, and Mike, why don't you start it off? What do you think? Yeah, well, there's, you know, like anything else, right? Nothing is always uh, 100% this way. It's always, there's always got to be a curveball. It's always got to be a what if, right? So the first thing you have to define is your home, right? Well, I, I live in a house, single story, neighbors around me, right? You might live in an apartment. Uh, you might uh, be staying at a hotel room or one of those extended stay places because you're on business travel. You might be, you might live in an RV park. Uh, I, I lived in an RV park for a little bit. You might live in a cave because you're a terrorist. I don't know. So you got to define the home thing. Uh, so that's one of those things that right now we'll probably just stick with the basic home layout. Uh, fun fact, the FBI says every 15 seconds that there's a burglary going on. So that's a FBI statistic for you. Yeah. And so that means, obviously, is that we have to be prepared all the time. That's why it is so important. We got, I think it's probably the five most important things that you can think of. And those five things are your mental mindset, setting things up for outside the home, setting up things inside the home, and then having an emergency plan. And then we're going to get into firearm storage. So those are the things that I think are going to be most important that you have to consider when you're talking about your home security. So the first one is your mental mindset. And we have posted up on our Facebook page on the very top, have for years, and it says, he who makes himself a sheep shall be eaten by wolves. And that is exactly true. If you make yourself just a sheep and you just oblivious to everything that goes on around you, those are the people that will become victims. And what we're trying to prevent is we don't want you to be a victim. Now, here's the unfortunate thing 
about having a good mental mindset is by you preventing yourself from being a victim, you make someone else become the victim because that perpetrator, that threat is going through a victim selection process. And if they look at you and they see that you are not the ideal victim, they're moving on to somebody else. If you're at home, it's likely going to be your neighbor. So you have to be aware is that you play the main part in this. And that's what we've talked about in the past is that you play a critical role in your own survival. You got to play that central role. Think about that, right? Is if you've ever watched Animal Kingdom and Mike and I have talked about this before is that, you know, who does the lion pick? Are they going to go after the strongest one? Or are they going to go after the weakest one? If they're going to pick out, they're going to pick out the easiest prey. So that's what you want to make sure that uh, you don't become the victim. And obviously part of that is being aware, right? I mean, awareness, in, and that's one of those nebulous things is we could spend hours talking about awareness and we probably will in a future podcast, but being aware of your surroundings is a key part, right, Mike? Yeah, it's an, it's a bottomless pit, right? <laughs> like the other day, my neighbor's like, hey, your your dog barks a lot. I'm like, yep. How about your dog? He's like, well, I don't have a dog. I go, exactly. I'm thinking I'm inside myself. I'm like, huh, well, I wonder where the bad guy's going to go first. Your place, not mine. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. So now we talk about awareness. Awareness should also be outside your homes, your shrubs, your trees. Uh, those all create cover, a concealment. Bad guys love concealment because they can sit outside your shrubs. They can have a crowbar. They can get their tools ready. They can open up their bag and they're concealed, right? And we don't want that. So we want to trim those down. We want to trim it low. I have a, I use bougainvillea. Uh, it's a very, very thorny bush. It grows like wildfire and it has thorns that are like hypodermic needles. So I have those in front of my uh, exterior front windows. There's a lot of really I don't know. I don't know another way to say it. Crappy bushes that are out there that you can, that, that look good, but still nobody wants to walk through, right? Yeah, exactly. Hey, I, sometimes crappy bushes are the way to go, right? So spotlights also, uh, a lot of people like to use the exterior lighting, the, what do they call them? Accent lights in front of your homes and stuff. Those are also good getting light in front of the, of the window, but not actually in the window. So if you have them down low, uh, stuff like that, just to keep Keep the shadows to a minimum in front of your home. Uh, also, hey, common sense, keep your doors locked, right? Garage doors, interior garage doors, also your door openers, the ones that you find. Like I've seen them all the time on people's uh, visors. Don't leave them visible. I, I now carry the ones on your keychain. They're very, they're small now. So that way I always have them on me, not, not in the car. So here's a, an easy example, right? How, how does a bad guy gain access? He breaks your car window, so it's relatively quiet, right? Because you're inside your home. And now he has access to your garage door. Boom, opens the garage door, he gets in. So real quick, fun fact again, our friends at the FBI, 34% enter through the front door, bad guys, 23% through the first floor windows, and 22% go through the back door. Again, those are your three most vulnerable areas. And then, of course, you have like garage doors, unlocked storage areas, basement windows, which I don't I don't know if you guys have them there in Nevada, but we don't really have too many of them here in Arizona. And uh, so, OK, the front doors you can easily do by striker plates and then the windows. Well, how do you secure a window without doing metal bars and making it look like a jail? They have this stuff called security window film. You just put it on the inside of your window. And what it does is it normally when you when you hit glass you know it just disintegrates and bad guys can climb in well security film actually keeps it all together so they have to hit it multiple times so it's really really difficult to gain entry into it no that's some good stuff yeah and if you can keep people out of your house that's the best thing right is we want to keep them on the outside without even trying to get in. So one of the things that you have to think about, not only from the outside, but then from the inside, and you have to be thinking about what you do inside your home. And if you remember, there was a video, Mike, uh, on YouTube. The woman was at home. It was at night, and there was five uh, males that broke into the house they were running around, turning lights on. She had boxes stacked up all over the place. Apparently, she was setting up a new restaurant somewhere and had all this stuff stored in her house. And she came out and engaged these guys and was just firing like crazy in her house and hit one of the guys and did actually kill one of the intruders while the rest of them escaped. 
But it is one of those things is that you have to think is that what if somebody does get inside your house? What are you going to do when they are inside? So here's a couple of things to think about to prevent, hopefully prevent them from getting into your house, but things to think about in the event that they do get inside. So the first one has to do with pet doors. Now, I'm not against pet doors at all. I just think you have to be thinking about pet doors. I have a German Shepherd and a pit bull mix. So if I had, I don't have a pet door, but if I did, I'd need one big enough for those dogs to get in and out. Probably the right size intruder could get through that door. So do we actually want to have a pet door? Maybe, maybe not. If I have a Chihuahua, I probably don't want a big pet door so somebody can fit through it. I want one that's small enough. But the other thing on top of that is you got to consider is if I'm not there, my dog's not there, what am I doing to secure that pet door to make sure that somebody can access it when I'm not not home, right? Yeah, absolutely. FYI to our friends out there in uh, La La Land, if you want to YouTube that video that uh, I don't make these titles up, I just say them as I see them. Uh, if you type in three burglars versus Asian lady with gun, <laughs> that's how you'll find the video. <laughs> FYI. Earlier, we talked a little bit about the striker plates. Those striker plates, what it is, it's just a piece of metal that has the holes cut out specifically for your deadbolt and your handle door, right? They're like eight bucks on Amazon. So, I mean, for eight bucks, you can fortify your front door and that negates that 34% of the front door entries. Right. And we'll go ahead and we'll put a link to that so everybody can see what we're talking about uh, at the uh, bottom of the podcast. Also, another thing to think about is don't let people in. And you say, well, I got to let my friends in. Well, I get it. You're going to let people in, but don't let people in that you don't know. Don't let strangers just walk into your house while they're talking to you, anything like that. Keep them outside. I, I, I have a ring at my house. I think that's a great piece of technology where you can be there to monitor your house from inside or outside or even remotely. It's a great thing. If you are going to have contractors come over to your house, uh, do some sort of plumbing or air conditioning or whatever it might be, is make sure that those people come with IDs to make sure that the people that are coming in are the people that you want in your house because we don't want people inside looking around to figure out where your strengths and weaknesses are um, with your home. The other thing is, is if you're going to have a giant 65 inch LED TV, I probably wouldn't put it right by your front window with the shades open. Okay. So keep your valuables away from easy view through your windows. And if you're, if you can't do that and your house isn't set up to where that's an op, an option, make sure you're keeping your blinds closed so people can't see in because they're gonna, burglars are going to be looking around to see their case in your house to see if there's something in there that they want to get. So if you can keep them out of view of the windows, that's the best thing that goes for jewelry, firearms, uh, any kind of uh, fancy, you know, stemware you might have or China, you want to just make sure that that stuff isn't easily viewable from, from outside. And the next thing is, and this is my favorite part, is know your home in the dark. Uh, You want to know in the middle of the night, you want to know what the sounds are in your house. You want to know where the creeks are in your house. You want to know where the trip hazards are, where any of the mirrors are, and where shadows are. So you can use those to your advantage because you know your house. So you should be out there wandering around in the middle of the night with no lights and looking around your house and getting familiar with where everything is. That's going to give you an advantage. And once you've figured out where everything is in your house, the next best thing to do is to have some sort of a safe room. And, you know, I know there's a Jodie Foster movie out there about panic room or whatever. (laughs) We're not talking about that type of thing. We're just talking about one of your rooms that gives you the advantage, right? And so the things that you want to make sure that is we want to make sure that is hardened. And when I say hardened, I mean, we want to make sure that you don't have those hollow crappy doors that are in most bedrooms. We want to make sure that you have a solid wood door, harder to get through, right? Want to make sure that you have a solid frame or reinforced frame around the door and also some sort of locks besides just, you know, a cheap twist lock. If you can have a deadbolt to it, even better. Additionally, that safe room should be, should have a single point of entry. There's only one way for the bad guy to get in and you can defend it, right? And then the next one is we want to make sure we have a window. Now, 
escape is a great thing if you can, but you don't necessarily know if the bad guy doesn't have friends outside. So maybe, maybe not is escape out the window. However, it gives you an opportunity to have communication when you've dialed 911 is it gives you the ability to have communication with law enforcement that might be outside. And we'll talk about some of the things here, Mike. Why don't you tell what it, what some of the stuff we should have in that safe room? Yeah, well, there's a couple things for that safe room to have. You should have a cell phone that's charged up. Here's another quick thing to think about. Power. Let's say you lose power or the bad guys cut power to your house. I know it sounds crazy, but I've been to calls where that has actually happened. So one of those things to think about. Uh, think about the uh, having an address taped onto the phone itself. Now, what's that way when you call 911, the address is readily available. Now, again, someone's going to say, well, that's crazy. Why would you tape your address on? Well, what if you had to give your phone to your kid and he or she is super nervous and just can't recall that address? Boom, they can just look up there and up oh, there it is right there on the phone. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, is we used to and you remember when we got OC sprayed. Yeah. is one of the things that you had to do is you had to call out your location on the radio and it's a little under stress. It's a little harder to remember and communicate those things. So as long as you have it there handy, you know, you want to make, you want to make this situation as easy as possible. Absolutely. Flashlights, right? Oh my gosh. A flashlight with fresh batteries. How many times have you gone to the cupboard to grab that flashlight that you think is good to go? And it it's not. Also, are you going to have a weapon mounted light? Or are you going to have one in your hand? I always have both. The first thing I always reach for, the gun by my bed, it has a flashlight, a, a weapon light mounted on it. And then I'm going to want a hand light so that I can make sure I can shine my way through the house, stuff like that. Things to think about. Uh, also, firearm of choice, what kind of ammo? Are you going to grab a shotgun? Or are you going to grab a carbine? Are you going to grab a pistol? What are you confident with? And what, are, what do you have to do to make that thing ready? Are you going to store it with one in the pipe, one not in the pipe? My go-to gun is a rifle with a Trigicon that always has a red dot on. It's not a battery-driven. It's a radiation-driven, right? Clothes. <laughs> I, I know that this one's going to be a good one because I sleep commando. I don't know why. I just like the error, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> too, so, <laughs> too much information. <laughs> Hey, but it's things to think about because when you jump out of bed, right, and you have to grab your gun and then I have to make my way through the house and the cops come, now what? <laughs> now where are you going to put your gun if you have nowhere to put it, right? So again, those are things that you have to think about. House keys with a glow stick to toss out the window to Leo's. That's, a, that's the first time I've heard that one. Jay actually pointed that one out to me. I'm like, dude, that's such a great idea. You can toss them out the window. Now the cops have access to your house to either come get you or whatever they need to do to get into your house. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's so easy. You just break it, shake it, throw it out the window, right? And at least then they know when you're talking to them on 911, say, hey, there's a, the keys are outside the back window. You know, they're going to be glowing orange, glowing red, whatever it might be. All right. So, and then after that, here's the thing you got to think about. You got to have a plan. You got to have some sort of emergency plan and whatever that plan is, you got to practice it regularly. Just talking about it and saying, Hey, this is what I would do if this happened. That isn't enough. You actually have to do it and you have to do it in the middle of the night. You have to do it with everybody in your family to make sure that that plan works. Okay. So you have to think about some of the questions that you need to answer with this emergency plan. These are the things you got to be thinking about. Who's going to deal with the intruder? Who's going to call 911? Who's going to go get the kids, right? You have to think about all those things that are going to happen. Who is going to be taking care of the situation in that situation? So you need to think about those now when there's no stress, there's no emergency, there's no panic. Then you also have to think about, we were talking about this earlier with the with the four safety rules. The, the last one was be aware of your target and surroundings. That's what's between you and the target. That's what's behind the target and what's around it. So you have to be paying attention to fields of fire in the event that this becomes an armed conflict with somebody that's coming in this, this, uh, uh, criminal threat, because you don't, you want to be aware of, okay, who's down the hall from that single point of entry? Who's to the left? Who's to the right? Cause we don't want a bunch of rounds flying into your loved one's bedroom, right? So we got to be thinking about that. Next thing is, is part of your plan's got to be, obviously seems common sense. Call in 911. Here's the thing. Don't hang up. Don't think I called 911, all's good. Set the phone down and everything that you say needs to be loud enough so they can hear it on the phone 
because they are recording everything. And that's going to be your witness, your evidence in the case that something happens, right? If there's a threat between you and your kids, how are you going to deal with that? And I think that's a huge question that everybody needs to think of it. If you're sitting in the room, the safe room is your master bedroom and the kids are down the hall and somebody is standing at your doorway, what are you going to do? How are you going to take care of your kids? And those are the things that you have to think about. Are you going to stay put? Are you going to move everyone out of the safe room to their location? Do your kids know how to get out of the house? Do they know where a muster point is in case something like that happens? So those are some of the things you got to think about. Yeah. And all these things, you don't have, it doesn't have to be doom and gloom, right? When you talk about it with your kids, listen, kids at different age levels and and all kinds of stuff. What we do is we play Nerf gun wars throughout the house and without them realizing it when they were younger, that's how I, I kind of explain things to them. Hey, if something ever happens, this is what's going to happen. This is what we do. And we would just have Nerf gun wars throughout the house with different locations and different points of entry all kind of, it doesn't have to be doom and gloom right so that's kind of how i approached it with my kids so now you say well firearm storage where do where do you keep your guns right how do you how do you access them so i have different guns throughout different portions of the house i have one in the main portion of the house i have one by my bedside and i have some in the garage all of them are in safes except for the one that i need to get to so I always use my pistol to fight to my rifle. That's just that's just the way I've I've grown up. Each home is going to be different. Some kids have not been exposed to guns, so you have to treat that differently. Some homes don't even have kids, so that'll be totally different. Uh, do you keep your gun loaded? Do you keep your gun unloaded? Do you carry Israeli style, right? And I think that's the in the mag no pipe. So again, all kinds of different things. Now under stress, we talk about. Uh, carrying Israeli style, right? Or, or not loaded, one, not one in the pipe. Are you going to be able to remember, oh yeah, I have to do a rack on my gun to make sure that I put one in the chamber. And, and you know, and here's a perfect example. I mean, we'll give you a real life. If you remember back to our basic pistol class that we did out at Joe Foss, maybe a couple of years ago, we had a lady who came down and the reason that she took the class, her son actually got the class for her. She came down and took it was because her son had an intruder in their house. And he came down and the guy, he came face to face with this guy in his kitchen. And he says that he had a malfunction with his gun. The problem is, is that he had it with one, he he just had the magazine in it and he didn't rack the slide. And when he went to pull the trigger, it just went click. Now it, fortunately it scared the intruder enough that he left the house and then barricaded himself in the neighbor's house. But the point is, is like you were just saying, Are you going to be familiar enough with your weapon that you choose or whatever it is that you choose to have it actually usable? And, and that's, you gotta, you gotta know it. You gotta know what you have. Yeah, absolutely. Not only that. So now, now let's say you're trying to access your gun or you're trying to throw your wife out from underneath the mattress, you know, to get your gun because you keep it under the mattress. So you kind of have to be wary of, you have all these guns in the house. Well, will the bad guy find them first? Right. So I think really when you look back at everything that we've talked about is what you're buying yourself is time, time to do whatever it is that you think you should do to take care of the threat, right? Whether it's you hear the glass break and now they're trying to get through your plantation shutters and now the dog is barking. So, you know, you you can't just wake up and start shooting. That's not, it's not really, you could try it, but it's probably not going to happen. Most of the time, that's when the bad guys strike. Two in the morning, three in the morning when you're sound asleep. Absolutely. So you're just cre- creating this buffer to try and do whatever it is to. At the same time, though, don't create a problem by just leaving your gun out on the kitchen counter. And now the bad guy comes across a gun and now you've just armed that person, right? So be cognizant of where you keep your guns, whether it be in a quick safe, you know, a fast uh, fingerprint safe or underneath your bed in a hidden compartment, something like that. And you just don't want that burglar to gain access to your gun. 
No, absolutely. Those are valid points. Um, what we need to be thinking about. So, uh, kind of to, uh, as a review of the stuff that we talked about, as far as your home and having it prepared, right? Is that we you got to start thinking outside your home and the things that you do outside of there, from from shrubbery to closing doors, and then the next thing is inside your home to making sure that you are familiar with your house, how it uh, looks and feels and sounds in the dark, and then we're talking about a safe room and having those things and what's going to be in it. Uh, and having an emergency plan and practicing it regularly with the people that are in the plan, we need to do that. And then obviously firearm storage and, and trying to balance access versus safety for us, Mike, I think that those are probably, if, if we were to walk into somebody's house and say, Hey, this is what we see. Those would be the recommendations we'd make, right? On a day-to-day basis. I mean, that, and again, just like you said, a lot of people, they're like, oh, is this really going to happen to me? I mean, it's, uh, I mean, let's, let's talk, you know, practicality. Well, that's, that's the problem is right. Even cops, right. They get complacent. Uh, it's, I practice this and I've never done this and it's never going to happen. And then you get caught with your pants down. Yep. So. Yeah, exactly. A couple of questions that we pose to you guys, I think are, are going to be important. I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. How about you, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. You know, what would you do if the threat is between you and your kids? And then the next one for me is what's your weapon of choice? Now, Mike, you said you use your pistol to fight to your carbine. Some people, maybe it's a shotgun, maybe it's just straight up, it's their carbines or go-to. I mean, I, I'd be interested to see what everybody is currently believes is their weapon of choice. Yeah, it's, it's really going to be up to the individual, I think. But w- let's hear what you guys have to say, right? And, uh, and again, just like Jay was saying, do you have an emergency plan and did you practice it? The time to practice it is not when it's going down. Time to practice it is beforehand. The whole thing is prepared defensive action. That emergency plan to be prepared, you have to actually do it and practice it. So it's just becomes second nature as soon as you're going to do it. Well, that was a good discussion. I I, I think that's a good place for us to uh, kind of leave it. Tell us what you guys would do in those situations. I, th- I think that that uh, on itself would be um, some good things to hear and make sure to post those comments on the link so everybody else can see um, what it is that you would do. And maybe it creates a good discussion for some other people for our next episode. I think Mike, what we're going to do is probably talk about everyday carry, right? Is what do we carry every day? What do we do when you're in a situation where, where you go doesn't allow you to carry and how do you adapt to that? Right. Yeah. EDC, right. Pocket dumps. Is that what everyone calls them nowadays? Yeah. Mine, mine just has hand sanitizer, paper clips and, and lint. So <laughs> my, I don't have any super, super sexy pocket dumps. I got, a, I got a pen. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, again, we appreciate you joining us. So on that note, we'll uh, go ahead and call it an episode. And that'll be our wrap for this episode of the Latent Force Prepared Defensive Action Podcast. Be sure to give us a like and a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Or visit our website, www.latentforce.com, so you can get all the latest information from Latent Force. If you have any suggestions or comments on this show, or suggestions for a future show, shoot us an email to podcast at latentforce.com. On behalf of Mike Garza and myself, thank you for joining us. Be safe. And as always, stay in the fight. Peace out.